Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about something that was released yesterday and uh, I've been using it for a few hours. I can't get this thing off my mind and so I thought I'd make this video to perhaps introduce you to it if you haven't seen this, talk about how Tonalic works with Logic, show you around a little bit, and then perhaps pose the question of whether our session players in Logic um, are just toys in comparison. Now, that's up for debate because I have some views on both sides of this and there's some really difficult things with Tonalic. This is a new session musician from Celimony, the ones who make Melodyne, and it is out there. It's a new way of thinking about this. It's not a set of loops. It's not a set of MIDI files. It is a group of performances by studio musicians, and they tell us who they are. These are not like anonymous things like Apple tends to do with Logic. These are actual people who were paid to play, and then Celimony uses their DNA technology from Melodyne to adapt it to whatever chords you throw at it. It's awesome. I mean, literally this thing blew me away when I first saw the videos. I went out and got the, the dollar for the free, well, not the free, for the month trial. And uh, I'm going to see where it goes because I think this could be something that works into my workflow. For all of us in Logic who really wished we had gotten a guitar session player, well, here is another option as a third-party solution for that. So this plug-in instrument, it works as a generator. Um, once you install it, you come into your track. You have to go down to the AU Generators. Probably some of you have never been into the Generators menu, um, but it's here. It means it doesn't take MIDI. It just pushes stuff out. It doesn't take anything in. So that's cool. And once we have this, we can go through. It's required that you're online for use with this. There's no offline mode. And that's because it is such a massive collection of things that it just, they said it's not worth downloading. They're like, you wouldn't download all of Netflix. And some people would say, I would if I could. Um, but they don't let you. That means you have to be online while you're using it, and uh, you can go through the explore process. You can choose the instrument you want. There's a really good set of filters to find exactly maybe what you're thinking of. They've got guitar styles, bass styles, uh, drum styles, auxiliary percussion styles, and it's not just guitars either. I mean, we're talking like baritone guitar. We're talking mandolin, banjo, ukes. Um, Upright bass, electronic bass, resonator guitar, electric sitar, sitar, sitar. <laughs> it's too early, um, acoustic, 12 string, etc. Goes on and on. And each of these, so if we go to, um, let's just go to acoustic guitar for a moment. You'll see there's 654 results that are all acoustic guitar and it shows you who's playing them. It gives you a little visual of it. It gives you some descriptors, uh, and then it tells you all about it. So then we can push play, and it will play with other instruments unless I come down and turn off the accompany button. So that's not something that's recreated with MIDI. That's literally... Um, this guy playing the guitar. And then how do they make it so it changes chords? Well, it's a great question, I'm glad you asked. I'll show you in a few minutes um, because there is a whole engine which gives us the power of the, the DNA from uh, all of the Salamone tech that they've created over these past years. This is one of the first real cool uses of that outside of just tuning th something. Okay, so how does this work? When we get what we want, we can drag it down into our little track here. Everything stays in here when we're using this in Logic. There is an ARA implementation, but it's just with Fender Studio Pro. It's the only DAW that's doing ARA integration with this plugin at this point, and it looks awesome. 
In fact, if anyone at Fender Studio Pro is ever watching this and says, hey, um, hey, Sam, would you, uh, can we like sponsor your channel and make you do videos about Studio, uh, or not Studio, but Fender Studio Pro with Tonalik, would you do it? And I'd be like, I, I mean, I would definitely consider it because the integration with this is so tight. It looks really awesome. And we have to do some workarounds with Logic. But I'm going to show you that as well today. I'm going to show you some of those ways of working in here. First and foremost, I'm going to close this for a moment because I have uh, our piano session player and I have just an Apple loop that has the chord tracks. Remember, if you're using Apple Loops and it has this little chord symbol next to it, that means there's region chords. And then you can click on any of these and say uh, chords, paste region chords to global track, and then everything else will follow it. Now, coming up in just over a week with uh, Logic, the new version on the 28th, we'll be able to analyze any file and have a chord track from it. So. Um, this becomes even more useful. But we can't use any of this information with Tonalic. Tonalic. Um, we have to drag these down into a file. And then I'm actually going to just join them together. So I have one long MIDI file. Like that. And then I'm going to right click on this and say export selection as MIDI file. I'm going to dump it on my messy desktop for the Tone Alec demo. Like that. Okay, cool. So this is the part that's a little bit of a pain. If you're in Fender Studio Pro, you can just change the chords and it changes what Tone Alec is doing. Um, in Logic, we have to kind of commit to the chords or re-export them if we make changes. Kind of a pain. But not the end of the world, and I don't think it's worth switching to a new DAW just because of that. Um, perhaps at some point it would be with tempo changes and other things, it could be some issues. I don't know yet, we're gonna dig into that. So I'm gonna take this MIDI file, I'm just gonna drag it. Well, I'm gonna actually wait. Oh yeah, so that is the beginning of the session. I just wanna make sure I wasn't dragging it someplace different, like this. So now I've got my chords in here. I'm gonna select all those and just move them over. Logic starts on one <laughs> instead of zero. So we have the chords that match now. Once we have those, we can come through with any of these Just drag it down and then loop it out for a little bit. And then we'll play this. Right? Awesome. Uh, we can also, once we're in here, just double click on this and it will take us to the other related ones, like the other variations. So here's main two, and we'll drag this out for a second. Awesome. It's following the tempo of our project. Uh, it is, the transports are connected. All of that stuff is there, even though it's not an ARA. Uh, situation. But let's take a look at this a little closer for a second. If I click on this and go to our expanded refine mode, you'll see the how this has been broken down. And actually, we can come through and make some changes to this. So if we wanted to. So we have some ability to do that within this uh, interface. I can't undo that, but we can always go through and change them back if we want. Okay, so that ties into our chords. Even though these chords are on 
uh, the Tenalic track. They're not going to it. It's just a way for me to be able to take them from the chord track and export them so that I could drag them into that. Okay, so awesome. If we want, we can bounce and join. Let's do all of that stuff just like that. There we go. So then we can use things like our groove track. We can uh, process this as an audio file if we want. It's not required, um, but certainly it is one of those options. Okay, so what else do we have inside this uh, that makes this really interesting? Well, we have all of the guitar stuff. That's really what I was most interested in at the beginning um, because we have um, all of like the acoustic guitars, electric guitars, I mean, just a ton of things searchable uh, by different genres. We want to do like rock and I want to do uh, block chords that are distorted. We're down to 81. It takes a second because they are downloading as we go. Let's pull this over. There's a couple other things I want to really show you uh, before I make some judgment calls here. So bar 12. So one thing right off the bat, when I click on this, we also have the ability to sometimes have things like transitions and endings. That's one thing I wish we had in the session players inside Logic was the ability to uh, say, I want this to be an ending note or I want this to transition to, like there's no endings on our session players. You have to make them all by hand. Cool. So we could go through and do all of that. Now, say I want another one. I can't load up the bass and the drums and the guitars all in one tonalic. But you'll see I open this up and it already has my chords. The chords are all there. Uh, it actually left off where I was in terms of my searching. Um, let's do an electric bass. Just pick off one of the top, maybe not that one. Cool. Let's pull this out. You'll see a lot of transitions, buildups, and even endings for some of these ones. I mean, this is you're able to get a really nice custom performance. And it's following the chords that I only had to import once. Okay, because it's all tied together in the bottom left-hand corner, there's this multi-track view. Now I can see the guitar and the bass all on one. And if I were to open this up on the other track, you would see the same thing. That's because it's like one interface for all of this. And so now we're building up an arrangement with these different parts. We could add auxiliary percussion or drums or multiple guitars. Sure, Tonalic has to go on multiple tracks. However, they're all tied into one interface. And once we have the chords in, um, then 
you're going to be able to use those. Now, uh, I didn't really look at the cord uh, chooser here or entering them manual. I just looked at the import MIDI because that's how I'm going to use it all the time. But there, there's lots of ways to do all of these things. There's effects. Um, there's the ability to add swing. I mean, there's they thought of a lot of things. But each one of these is an actual performance and then it's just manipulated using their advanced DNA stuff in order to make it fit the chords that you're doing. Whew. Okay, what does Logic have that <laughs> they don't? First of all, if I were to bring out another session player like the drummer, Uh, let's just pull out one region here. I do have more control. I can create different patterns, patterns that weren't even created by the original. Um, it's not quite as human as what we're getting, but we have more control. And on top of that, I can go through, for instance, and change out individual kit pieces and with the tonalic, you don't have any of that. You're stuck with the audio recording you get. So we get more humanness, but we get less overall flexibility. That's the trade-off. One more thing we should talk about, which is the pricing. That's right. You can do just the arranger, which gives you a lot of it without uh, the full sound control with effects. You don't get the refine tools for the note level editing. Uh, you don't get the musical voice leading adjustments or the independent drum kit and cymbal control. Um, you do get a little bit of cymbal control, just turning them up and down. Um, you don't get the final polish without losing the performance feel. Um, but that's $15 a month, every month, for as long as you want to use them. And then if you want all of the advanced stuff, it's $25 a month. Don't let the $24.90 fool you. Okay, that's a lot. So what we get with Logic, without the guitars though, drums, bass, keys, and this doesn't have keys, uh, we get all of that included without currently a monthly subscription uh, at all. And so eh, there you have it. The price of getting some of these amazing sounding guitars, bass, and drums uh, is you have to be online when you're using it, and you have to pay either $15 or $25 a month uh, to use it. I'm on the fence. Those guitars. I really wish we had gotten a session guitar player in Logic, um, but we didn't. And now, here we are <laughs> on the on the edge of other people blowing out of the water what we can do with our session musicians. It's so good. Go try it out for $1. Uh, see if you agree. But um, I think it's worth testing out. Makes, makes the MIDI element in our session player sound just a little bit like toys for sure. <laughs>